chapter 3. They look over the mountain shark as she stared at General Peak's face in disbelief at herself, as if she was trying to see if her hand did not leave an imprint on his face. His eyes were deadly calm and that scared her, but she was unprepared for what happened next as he scooped her up and tied with her into the pool. As the heat of water, he grabbed her to him, bent his head and locked blitz with her. Terrorly and family, to the bull became breathless. Then he lifted his head to look deeply into her eyes and said fiercely, Next time you slap me, I will do more than just kissing you. Then he released her. Unable to give him a reply, Lambo got out of the pool, grabbed a towel, robe, and ran to the room. She did not see the general for the next two weeks because he had to travel down to Texas. For some reason, she was pleased at him for not deeming it fate to tell her personally that he would be traveling, but called herself back to order. After all, he must still be upset with her for slapping him, though he had his revenge with a punishing kiss, and they even mean nothing to each other. She unhappily turned to herself. So when she heard it was back today and everyone was to have dinner with him, she decided to excuse herself for the night. Feigning headache, when Tala texted her about the dinner. General P kept looking at the door to the dining room. He had lost all concentration with a small talk at dinner, and Tala was borrowing the blazes out of him. There was just one woman on his mind, and isn't it really splendid that she decided to skip dinner when she was a real reason? He organized this dinner in the first place. Gosh, what an effort she. He thought about her a lot while he was away and picked up his phone to call her several times, but would stop himself at the last moment. Unsure of himself when it comes to her. He didn't know what to say to her to break the ice that had formed between them after just small fight at the pool. So he thought it would be sweet to her at dinner in front of everyone and she would have no choice than to speak with him. General, hey General, Tolo tapped his shoulders and snapped out of his stars and looked at her in confusion. She laughed and asked where his mind was. As she had spoken to him three times and he did not hear, he apologized and finally, he could not take it anymore and asked Tolo a bit limbo. Where's Debbie? The smile fell off Tolo's face as she told him Lambo couldn't make dinner because I had aches. Immediately his face clouded over with concern. Why didn't you inform him before now? I gotta go check on her. He got up as Tola watched him with her mouth wide open. He made some lame excuse to the cast and crew, went to his brother's showroom at the hotel to get some aspirins and left for Lambo's room. Lambo kept tossing and turning. She could not slip a wink. Eventually, she sat up in the bed and started sulking. She's now regretting not going to the dinner. Even if it's just to see his handsome face, would have made her happy. Now she's in the room suffering, peace and hungry. Maybe she should sneak out and go buy food. She got out of her bed, stood in her jeans cutoffs and a white shirt. When she heard a knock at the door, she stilled. She was not expecting anyone. She opened his not to yell as he had started moving towards her in a sudden way, flirting with her and always cracking dry jokes. But she never reciprocated. She likes to chat with him about the music industry, that was all. She wore her slippers and opened the door, and was surprised to see the general facing her. Hey, he said, and she replied, hey. His eyes were on her face. She gazed back at him and immediately looked away. He moved from one foot to another, still staring at her. He cleared his throat and said, how are you feeling now? I brought some aspirins for you. Lambo looked up and asked with a puzzled look. Aspirins? What for? Toto told me about your headache. Was that not why you skipped dinner? Oh yes, I am good now though, she replied. I took medication already, thank you. She smiled a little at him to cover up a light. Not realizing the smile made her look so beautiful. Now he held her gaze and asked in a very husky voice. Daddy, are you still upset with me? Lambo's eyes left his and went immediately to his soft lips. Her breath hitched. She shook her head no and it took her left wrist. Okay, I apologize. If I have offended you in any way, he places a case on her wrist. Open the palm, I put the experience in it. 
have to go now because I don't trust myself I won't wait here. And I missed you while I was away. You released the rest and left without a backward glance. Nambo's heart danced for joy. She was an under hungry. She couldn't believe her ears. She missed him too like crazy. She went happily to her bed to sleep, dreaming of General P. Nambo was having a drink with you all and sat. When General P came around to them with Tyler stuck on his hand like he could. He disengaged himself from there now and said, Yo, can they allow me to cover this beautiful woman and give you an order? They'll be asked to do a little task. So Tala is here for you. And with that, he took hold of Lambo's hand and took her away to one of the offices on set. He closed the door and moved closer to saying, You look so beautiful. Today, I kept looking at you with the girl and felt you needed rescuing. They were standing so close together and the tension between them stared up so quickly that Lambo's insides were sizzling as he too started breathing so fast. With a trembling voice, she asked, So what is this task that I have to do for you? What? What task? He asked in confusion. Then remember the silly excuse and said, Yes, I need to show you how to stand by the window for your last thing. Now they were both breathless. He touched her shoulder to turn into the window and Lambo melted. Like Paul, the engineer piece of effort in Jolanda, it is time to lock up with her. The breath became so red and it transferred to her neck. When they heard the door open, and one of the linemen entered, saw them, and started apologizing profusely. No, it's just real though. General told the man as I left. Lambo was about to run away when he caught him from behind and whispered in the ears that since the last few days of shooting, they were all going out that night to celebrate. And they would not tolerate any excuse of skipping the night out from her as so I wanted out there. Lambo nodded and still ran from his hand, hearing him laugh softly as she too was smiling. The night out was a disaster for Lambo. She rode in the back. With Tola and Yo. Tola pushed her to the back with Yo while she sat in front with the general, touching his arm every now and then. Lambo was jealous but couldn't do anything about it. When he got to their dinner, everyone was there and they started eating, drinking, and chatting. At the table, Lambo sat between General P and Yo and started feeling uncomfortable when Tola started asking her questions about acting on the movie industry that she couldn't answer. Well, Yo too was flirting and looking into her eyes. She looked away straight into General P's direct glance. And her head started beating so fast as she remembered their kids that afternoon. He kept staring at her, then started asking her about one of Debbie's work that he had seen. Unfortunately, she didn't know the name of the people involved on in the project, so she couldn't answer correctly to the extent that they were all shot. Then she called her sister Debbie to tell her to get ready to be upset about the weekend to show the last few things as she came up again. Not even for a minute. Baby was surprised because Lambo had promised she would finish the last few scenes, but she couldn't take it instead of getting ready herself. When Lambo came back, they were all ready to leave. They rode into Narapi's car again. When he got to the hotel, then we came to us and asked Lambo, what exactly are you hiding from me? Why are you so secretive? Tell me. I will understand. Lambo shouted at him. Oh, please, leave me alone. As she got a key and unlocked the room door, he followed her inside and pulled her to him, crushing her soft lips with his. The keys were thoroughly empty. They both found it difficult to breathe. After some time, Lambo realized they were on the bed. Then I leaped out his head and looked at things with eyes and said, You drive me crazy, girl. I don't know what to do about you. If I stay longer than this, I will not be held responsible for what will happen. He decided to get up and Lambo grabbed his head. Don't leave, she commanded. And he obeyed. Catherine eyed his arms again and started doing other things to her until they heard a very loud knock at the door. The garden bull paced. Tala was at the door to take General P away from an important phone call. Looking daggers at Lambo with jealousy, they were in order and told General P she would be going to San Diego and would be back by weekend to shoot the last remaining scenes. This agreement told her she has to be on set. She said she needs two days off, and we told her that even if 
should take the same days off as unless she would give them most brilliant performance. They got her really angry and she told him to get out of the room and then come back after his call. She couldn't sleep all night. She was so pissed at him for making such a statement. Then knowing he was said that to discourage her from leaving, he wanted her to be with him, but Stephen came out the wrong way. The next morning, she packed the bags and left for San Diego to her aunt's place where Debbie was waiting for her. Immediately, her sister saw her, she knew something was wrong with her, and before she knew it, Nimbo was spilling everything that happened between her and General P. The following Monday, she was at a workshop in San Diego when her phone rang, and she saw it was Debbie. She came out the rest of the call, wondering why Debbie was calling her since they had spoken earlier the morning, and she told her she was going to an housing workshop in Sweet Valley, San Diego. She was mildly dressed like a businesswoman and looking all beautiful. And as she stepped out, Marissa Lambert looked upright into the brown eyes of General Perry of J Pictures. A phone dropped from her hand from the shock of seeing him, a mere four feet away from her. She opened her mouth to speak to him, but no words came out. He laughed with her humor and said, Good afternoon to you. The runaway fake actress, Mercy Evan Lambo. He put his phone to his ears and said to whoever was on the other side, You can now give Debbie your phone back. Lambo is with me now. Then he got out his phone, stepped over to her, and hauled her off her feet and over his shoulders, and began to work away.